What is going on everyone? Hope you're all doing well. Today I wanted to talk to you about the Witcher 3 next gen update which became available last evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Time and had a midnight launch for our friends over in Europe or if you were in certain parts of Europe. They rolled it out at the same time for everyone but it's available now. It was about 47 gigabytes in download size for me over on GOG. So wanted to talk about it particularly on the 7900 XTX which are now available to the public. And I had, had a review go out a couple of days ago and also posted some benchmarks yesterday. So I wanted to see how it would fare on the Witcher 3 next-gen update. And spoiler alert, it's not great. I also did some testing on the RTX 4090 as well in a separate rig. So this isn't meant to be like an apples-to-apples -apples comparison of NVIDIA versus AMD. But I just had to kind of talk about the performance that we're seeing in this game. It's a lot more taxing than I honestly thought it would be considering as old as the game is. But it looks absolutely fantastic. But it is very taxing to run, and AMD right now is just not having a good time at all. But first, today's video is brought to you by SuperCDK.com, where you could save money on games for all of your favorite platforms, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro licenses for just $22, and then you can unlock the prestigious Dark Mode for Windows 10, which I honestly could not live without. It is blinding without the dark mode you guys needed in your life. And now you can also save an additional 25% off at checkout by clicking buy now on any software products over there. Just go ahead and add it into your cart and put in my code JP25 at checkout and apply and that'll bring our price from $22.44 all the way down to $16.83, a savings of over $5. And I'll walk you through how to get your key and install it on Windows 10, go ahead and click Submit Order and complete your checkout from there. For me, that's going to be with PayPal, and then click on Pay Now. After completing the checkout, it'll bring you to your purchased order page, and it will update in a matter of seconds, or just go ahead and hit F5. Go ahead and do that one time. It came through literally immediately. I got the payment email that it had gone through and the delivery of the product exactly at the same time. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click on view keys and codes and we'll get our code right here that we can go ahead and copy and paste in on Windows 10 by hitting the start button and typing the word activate. When you see that activation settings or see if Windows is activated, go ahead and click on that and it'll bring up this right here and click on change your product key or unlock Windows 10 as I already have Windows 10. I obviously don't need to put in a new key, but just paste it in and then go ahead and click next and you are all done and set. For more information on supercdk.com as well as the coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. So first up, before we start talking about the performance, I'll have timestamps below if you want to jump around, but I do want to highlight uh, the options menu as there has been a fair amount of graphics options added into the game for The Witcher 3 next-gen updates, some which will work on NVIDIA as well as AMD, some which will only work on NVIDIA like frame generation, which isn't available in this update here day one, so that is nice to see, and you're probably going to want to use it if you're on a 40 series card. It's very taxing even on the 4090 and 4080. So as you can see here, we've got four different ray tracing options which they've added in, ray tracing global illumination or RTGI for short, reflection shadows as well as ambient occlusion. These are really the primary next-gen features, graphically speaking. Of course, there's been some other optimization tweaks, armor sets, and things of the like. But for the graphics on the PC, if you're really looking to take advantage of all this stuff that's been added into The Witcher 3, ray tracing is really where it's at, and that is where AMD is struggling the most. Now, for anti-aliasing, the game has FSR as well as DLSS, which you're also going to want to use even if you're on a 4090. This game still requires you to use to use DLSS more or less if you want to get a smooth-ish and playable experience, but it definitely runs significantly better on NVIDIA as you'll be seeing in a bit, but we've got DLSS FSR2. We've also got a temporal anti-aliasing upscaling option, FXAA, or you can disable it entirely if you want to. There's also dynamic resolution scaling. We've got a sharpening option, and everything else down here is pretty much what we saw in The Witcher 3, you know, pretty much since it's, since, since its inception, although they have pretty much put everything into one menu now. They used to have like a graphics and post-processing screen, so they've sort of condensed it down into one, but there is still a display window. But these are all the features we've gotten here, and this is what I have disabled, motion blur and blur, chromatic aberration and vignetting. Those are options that just make the game look worse, in my opinion. Even depth of field, I would argue, in this game, it's not really fantastic. I probably would play with it off most of the time. Uh, we've also got bloom and light shafts, uh, which I do run. I think those are nice graphical effects. So 
Coming down, we've also got Hairworks, Hairworks anti-aliasing, so you can utilize all that stuff. And then we've got some new Ultra Plus options down here for some options that were already in the game previously. Background characters, shadow quality, terrain, water, foliage visibility range, green, uh, sorry, grass density, texture quality, and detail level. So that's the main options menu. And, and as you can see, there's new presets up here for RT as well as RT Ultra. And then in our display options, you can set your resolution, full screen, borderless windowed, windowed mode, etc. And also DLSS frame generation, which is going to be key to get a very good frame rate in this game. And you can, on the 49, you can get over 100 frames per second. And it does have NVIDIA Reflex low latency, which again, if you're going to use frame gen, you pretty much have to use it. Now, getting back to the performance of the game, we'll start off talking about the 7900 XTX, as that is the newest graphics card kid on the street that everyone's talking about right now. As I said at the start, this card is not having a good time when it comes to ray tracing in pretty much any game apart from like Far Cry 6, which uses DXR. So AMD actually does fairly good right there, but it's honestly not the most intensive ray tracing experience. It's sort of like just a just a dash of ray tracing, if you would. And it actually runs very well on both NVIDIA as well as AMD cards. But when it comes to, you know, really trying to get the most out of something and throwing in all the different ray tracing effects, the shadows, the reflections, the ambient occlusion, the global illumination that really sort of brings those ray tracing effects to life and make this a next gen update. Um, AMD struggles a lot. And it's not just in terms of the frame rate. Of course, that is a struggle as well. Even using the FSR on balanced, I was only hovering around 40 to 45 frames per second for the vast majority of the time, which... Okay, one could argue that you could play at that, maybe lock it to 30 FPS and you can get an okay gaming experience, although not acceptable in my personal opinion. But the frame times, I mean, oh my God, the thing is nonstop, constant micro stuttering all over the place. The mouse felt extremely sluggish, like I was moving it through a stew. It was just, it was terrible. It's actually fairly fitting for The Witcher 3 is there's a large section of the game that's spent in a bog as I very much felt bogged down trying to play this on the 7900 XTX when utilizing the ray tracing features. It is just, like I said, it is a, it's not like, it's like you're playing along and like, okay, and then there's a stutter here, there's a stutter there. No, look at the frame time graph. It is constantly railing up and down constantly the entire time. It does not stop. The game never gets smooth. The cutscenes are smooth. Those are okay. You, you, as long as you're not moving the mouse, it's an okay experience. But the second you have to move or pan the camera at all on the 7900 XTX with ray tracing, the game is completely unplayable. I cannot emphasize that enough. It is an unplayable experience, and I have to think it would only be worse if you played on any other AMD cards that can utilize ray tracing technically can utilize, but realistically, they're so far behind NVIDIA on ray tracing. It's not even funny at this point. It's sort of embarrassing. Now, if you switch off the ray tracing stuff, it runs really, really well. With no FSR whatsoever, I was seeing around 90 to 100 FPS. If you use FSR in quality, you're going to get over 100 frames per second. So no issues there. It's not that you can't enjoy the Witcher 3 anymore with this next gen update because you absolutely can. And you could still use the Nilfgaardian armor sets from Netflix, which look almost as bad as AMD's frame time graph with ray tracing enabled. But that's like sort of, that's like sort of the joke, honestly, is because Netflix did such a bad job with that armor set and they put it in the game, which is kind of hilarious that they did that. But, you know, there it is. But playing, you know, you could still take advantage of all of that sort of next gen stuff. They're going to have some new armor sets added in. There's new quests and some of the, like I showed you, some of the options in the options menu now go up to ultra plus. So certain things have been turned up to 11, if you would, mind my spinal tap reference but really i think when it comes to the next gen version of the game the big selling point is obviously ray tracing it's about for at least for me and everyone i've spoken to it's about the graphics for this next gen update i've already played this game and beat it like four times so there's not going to be i, I i'm going to come back and i'm going to do those quests but if it wasn't for the ray tracing and stuff i probably wouldn't bother but I really want to see all of those nice features and see this really taken into the next generation. Otherwise, I just feel like I'm replaying The Witcher 3 all over again, which is not necessarily the worst thing in the world, 
but I would certainly like to be able to use the ray tracing features, especially on a graphics card that literally launched 24 hours ago for $1,000. Now, I did also test this on my RTX 4090. This was in a different rig I have. Right now I have the 7900 XTX downstairs in a 7950X system. I have the RTX 4090 still in my 9900K rig. I'm in the process of transitioning things over, but I digress. But I did want to try it on there as well. And the 4090, first, right out of the gate, was it was very, very taxing, very hard to run. Um, but, you know, it is definitely playable and it's a lot smoother. There was some hitches and some stutters, which could be down to DirectX 12 and maybe shaders compiling for the first time as that's what it seemed like as the longer I played and the more I, you know, circulated back around to areas that I had already been to, the game just got smoother and smoother as I played it, even with ray tracing on and using DLSS on the quality setting. Um, during like cutscenes and things, I was regularly seeing the game around 80, 80 plus FPS. Uh, and then walking around, you know, it could be anywhere from 60 to 70. And then during some combat sequences, or if you get closer to the cities, it's going to come down into the 50s. But overall, still a fairly smooth gaming experience, just a very, very demanding one. But if you are on an RTX 40 series card, thankfully, the game does have frame generation in it day one, which would be the way I would opt to play it, honestly. I would opt to play this game with the frame generation and DLSS on quality as utilizing that. I was getting north of 100 frames per second, like 99% of the time, and it felt like a completely smooth experience. No issues there. And of course, if you want, if you don't want to use the frame generation, and there's still some people that think negatively about it, although I think it's an incredible technology and I have no issues using it whatsoever, uh, you can turn it off and use just DLSS and you'll still get around 60 frames per second. I, like I said, I was playing on quality, so if you're willing to drop it down to the performance mode, uh, then you'll, you'll you'll definitely get a boost there and you'll surely be over 60 frames per second as you would technically be playing the game at 1080p if you're already initially playing it for, on a 4K monitor uh, like, like I was. But make no mistake about it, folks. Witcher 3 next gen, very demanding. Even if you're going to be on something like a 3080, 3090, you know, from last generation, if you're trying to play at 4K, you're definitely going to be needing to use some DLSS and probably not even the quality setting. You're probably going to be on the performance uh, or something like that if you're trying to play on a 4K display. Now, if you're on a 1440p monitor, you know, you're probably going to fare a little bit better and then you can get away with DLSS quality. But for th even 3080, 3090 owners, this truly is a next-gen update when it comes to all of the ray tracing effects. And it is extremely demanding, but it makes the game look gorgeous. I'm a fan of it. Um, like I said, I, I've already beat this game a lot, so I don't know how much more time I'm going to put into it. But... AMD has got a lot of work to do. AMD, that's really the point is AMD has a lot of work to do when it comes to ray tracing. And I'm not sure they're going to get it ironed out in this generation just through driver updates. I mean, they might be able to smooth out some of the frame times in this update with a driver, with a driver revision for the 7900 XTX and the XT. But I am skeptical at best as they still have not added in any real uh, you know, RT cores or some type of equivalent to what NVIDIA has where they can actually sort of even even catch up. It just feels like they're just throwing, you know, more brute force at it more than anything with their chiplet design, which can be great for rasterization performance and keeping costs down. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you can't take advantage of all these next-gen features, and that is the way that games are going... I think AMD is going to continue to struggle here going even into whatever their next cards are with their 8,000 series of graphics cards unless they actually tackle ray tracing head on and do something to utilize it correctly and stop just trying to brute force it with their standard cores that they have, their standard shader cores that they have on these on the triplets now. And I just don't see it going well for them. So let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below on uh, the Witcher 3 next-gen update. If you've had a chance to try it already, let me know. let us know what it's running like on your system. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, though, folks. Hope you guys all have a great day, and I'll catch you next time for another video. Peace.